Hey, thanks for joining me today. This is Pastor Lafayette. We're in Psalm 129. It is Friday, and uh, we'll get started here in verse 1. <clears throat> Another short psalm. We've been short after Psalm 119, so let's... Uh, verse 1 says, Many a time they have afflicted me from my youth. Let Israel now say, Many a time they have afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed on my back, they made their furrows long. The Lord is righteous. He has cut in pieces the cords of the wicked. Let all those who hate Zion be put to shame and turned back. Let them be as the grass on the housetops, which withers before it even grows up, with which the reaper does not fill his hand, nor he who binds sheaves his arms. Neither let those who pass by them say, The blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Um, Let's take a look at this and think about, uh, let's talk about Israel today. And that's really what this psalm is about. Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth. When Israel was first born, when Israel first became who they became, saying that they were afflicted, they were always tormented. Um <clears throat> that people were always against them. Uh, you know, people are against Israel today. It is amazing to me how quickly we forget our roots and how quickly we forget the heritage of the Christian faith. And we make friends with the enemies of Israel. And we make friends with the enemies of God. It happens all the time. We as Christians, uh, well, I, our nation, which is a tremendous friend of Israel, has turned to where we are now making friends with um, those who hate Israel. I don't know how you can be a friend of someone who lo be a, be a friend of Israel and yet be a friend of someone who hates Israel, unless of course you're trying to take the part of the mediator and bring peace. But someone usually loses in this. It is God who called Israel out of nothing. He is the one who brought them forth. To stand against them would be to stand against Him. It's also amazing to me how we as Christians so often in our friendships, in our relationships, do all that we can to be friends with people whom have rejected the Lord. Now understand what I'm saying. I believe we should be friends with we should be friendly to everyone. Our goal is to reach everyone. But so often we make agreements. We make um, covenants, we'll say. It's as though sometimes we go out of our way to be more loving than God is or more friendly than God is. And we take it upon ourselves to be the kind of people who are, you know, you know, that picture of God's a little harsh. Let me just, let me soften it for you. <coughs> Jesus said, if they hated me, they will hate you. That's what he said. I don't think it's our job to try and soften or weaken our stance, our position, or the gospel of God so that people like us. My friends, we are the bearers of truth. It is time we tell the truth. We tell it in love, and we tell it in tenderness, and we tell it in gentleness, 
but we tell it. And if it hurts our friendships, it does. And if people are aggravated with us, they are. And if people hate us, they do. And if they persecute us, they will. But it is not our job to soften God's word or his truth so that everyone will like us. If Jesus was the perfect man, how is it that he was hated? Because he told the truth. You and I will be no greater than our master. Be a truth teller. Speak the truth in love. Father, help us to be faithful to the word and to you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.